All right, so this was lab 4.4. So this was cold, cold water, this was hot water, and the, because the atoms are moving cold, slower in the cold water, the, the color's starting to disperse now that I'm moving it. it. The color's mostly at the bottom or in one section, and this one was the hot water, and it's completely covered, I guess. I can't really tell the difference, maybe if I have some white behind there. Let's see. Cold water. Hot water. All right, so Adam, hopefully you can see a difference there. All right, do the lab for me. Great, all right, so Adams, you guys got your pictures drawn? And label so I can tell what the difference between your picture is. Okay, so let's see here. Today, talking about atoms, um, so that was experiment. We did also experiment four, three, and crushed a can because cold water takes up less space um, than hot water, so it crushed the it condensed the uh, container that it was in. All right, let's find my periodic table. You should all have a handy dandy periodic table. It is going to serve you well in the next few weeks. Um, there are a couple, not a couple, a few. Um, we've talked about this periodic table already before. Remember that zigzaggy line is really important and things on this side of the zigzaggy line are, hmm, what are those over here? What? Non-metal. Non so everything on this side of the zigzaggy line is a metal. And remember that hydrogen kind of, in that case, is over here. Okay. Um, we're also going to talk about um, there are certain um, elements that don't hang around by themselves. Um, so there's kind of a seven here, um, starting at um, chlorine. See, that's number six. Chlorine, nitrogen, oxygen, and then fluorine, and then the whole row here, I guess it's a column, of fluorine, chlorine, boron, iodine, acetine. Those are special because they stick together whenever they're in nature, they're not by themselves. They stick together uh, as two, and so you don't see just oxygen hanging around. You'll see O2. So you, you'll have to know when they're, sometimes um, they're going to give you a list of items that are going to react together and they'll just say oxygen. And you need to remember that oxygen is one of these special ones. They are called homonuclear diatomics. Homo, that means they're the same, two oxygen or two fluorine or two bromine. Um, so two of them, uh, they stick together, di means two. So homo means the same, diatomic means there's two of them, okay? So again, it makes a seven, so from chlorine to fluorine and then this row here. So those ones are homonuclear diatomics, they stick together. They're more stable when they're together, so they don't. They don't hang around by themselves. If they react together with something else, they can react with just one. But when they're just by themselves in a vessel, if we had a, a vessel or a container of oxygen, it's gonna be O2, okay? All right, so those are homonuclear diatomics. You're gonna to need to know those. Um, so today we're gonna to talk about some chemical reactions. So reaction is when any two things mix together and give you some new things. Right, that's what chemistry is. Mix stuff together and you know, hopefully you have a cool explosion or something, right? Um, so we did learn um, in the past that um, things don't react, it, like I can make a half a batch of chocolate chip cookies, but when I half the batch, it's hard to half an egg, right? Same with my elements, you don't get half of a chlorine, you don't get a quarter of a oxygen, okay? You have to have whole numbers only, whole number ratios, okay? 
So we're going to, um, if you have, if you have carbon and oxygen turning into carbon dioxide, so remember, um, carbon can, uh, carbon can sometimes be by itself, but oxygen doesn't. So um, you, these, this side of your reaction is called your reactants, and this side of your, um, I lied about your, your car carbon can be by itself. It's not a homonuclear diatomic, so it's a seven that starts at nitrogen. So these are your reactants, and these are your products. As I'm looking at this, I'm realizing it was chlorine that I was seeing, not carbon. So carbon is, can be by itself. So carbon plus oxygen, but it's a homonuclear diatomic, so it's O2, can give you carbon dioxide. But what we did today in the lab was talk about the atoms. So um, atoms are what moving, atoms are what are reacting together. So there, and we learned um, in previous weeks that. Um, matter does isn't created or destroyed whatever we start with in our reactants we have to end with in our products so we have to have the same amount of atoms okay it's all equal so this side we could really put an equal sign here but we're we're showing that these two together react together and go this way when in the reaction so we have our reactants making our products so if I have one carbon on this side of my equation, I have to have one carbon on this side of my equation. If I have two oxygens on this side of the equation, I have to have two oxygens on this side of the equation because it's equal, okay? Sorry about my one needle. All right, so let's look at, so it's called, we call this a balanced equation. So there's the same amount of atoms on one side of the equation as the other. Okay, so we did talk in the past about how to um, count atoms, right? So this is one carbon, um, and we're gonna talk today about the big numbers here. So when there's no number there, it means one. Um, when there's no number here, it means one. And this means that there's two oxygens, okay? But if there was a number here, it would mean, it would multiply out by however many, because that means how many molecules you have. So, um, so this is your, um, it's a subscript, meaning small. And today we're gonna to be talking about the big numbers, which is your stoichiometric coefficient. It's the big name for the big number, okay? Stoichiometric coefficient just, just makes you sound super smart, right? You go around and tell your parents that today we're talking about stoichiometric coefficients. They're gonna say, wow, you are so smart. Okay, so, uh, but we need to be able to count how many atoms we have. So, so we're going to give you another equation here. This is on page 121, and this is 2HCl plus CHBr2 turns into, oh, I should have started over farther. I'm going to run out of space. 2HCl plus CABR2 turns into 2HBR plus 2CACL2. Okay, so there's some other letters on there that I didn't write because I'm lazy. Okay, so the aqueous in parentheses, that means that it's in a liquid form. Um, so then the S in parentheses means that that's a solid. So this is like some sort of salt that you're putting into a liquid and you're seeing what reacts. And then this turns into, this is AQ, so that means that turns out to be a liquid and this turns out to be a solid. So you end up getting a different salt, okay? So, but what we're looking at is, remember that, and my handwriting is terrible, so it's, I apologize, um, but the big letters, means that that's one of your elements, right? So a big C by itself is carbon, so this is Cl, so it's another element, but just don't get confused that that L is another atom, it's not. So this is hydrogen and chlorine and calcium and bromine and hydrogen and bromine and calcium and chlorine. So what they did, they just swapped things. So the question is, determine whether or not the following equation is balanced. 
So what we need to do is draw a line, um, the easiest way to do this, and list on this side all of the ingredients that are on in our um, reactants here. So we have hydrogen and chlorine, we have calcium, we have bromine, and see if I have exactly the same amount of atoms on this side. So I just copy so that I can easily see them next to each other. So then I count. So how many hydrogens are on this side? Well that two, the big two, it's a stoichiometric coefficient, means that there's two hydrogens and there's two chlorines because this means that there's a, a molecule that's got a hydrogen, it's got a chlorine, we'll learn how to draw it later, and then there's two of them. So they're stuck together, uh, but there's one here and one here, so there's two of them. Okay, so that two multiplies out by everything that's in there. This two means that there's two bromines. This means that there's one calcium and it's stuck to two bromines. And there's only one molecule of that. So this one multiplies out, but you don't have to multiply it. And this means there's one calcium and two bromines. So when I'm counting them, I will do, I have two hydrogens, I have two chlorines, I have one calcium on this side, and I have two bromines on this side. Okay, so now let's see what we have over here. So remember the big number, stoichiometric coefficient, multiplies out. So this is two hydrogens. I have two bromines. Ah, I have two calciums. But how many chlorines do I have? So this two multiplies by that two. So that means I have four chlorines on this side. So the question was, do you have a balanced equation? Well, super hard math. Is this equal to this? I mean, hydrogen's fine, bromine's fine, calcium, eh, chlorine, eh. So the answer would be no. No, you don't have a balanced equation. So we're gonna learn today, how do you balance an equation, okay? So, um, we're not gonna bother balancing this one, but you would just say, no, the equation's not balanced. So let's do another one and I'm gonna ask you my numbers, okay? Greetings. Okay, um, six CO2, that's six carbon dioxide, plus six H2O, six waters, turns into C6H12O6, plus some oxygen, okay? It's photosynthesis, yay! Okay, so draw your line. Write all of the things that are on one side and all of the things that are on the other and see if they're balanced. So what kinds of things do I have on this side of the equation? Shove them. What do I have? What's Six this? Carbon. Okay, I'm gonna just start with the letters. So carbon, what else do I have? Oxygen. Oxygen, what else do I have? Hydrogen. Hydrogen. Oh look, there's some more oxygen. So for me, I like to see that my oxygen's going in two different places. So when I do my numbers, I'll put two numbers instead of adding them together. You like to add them together, great. I like to see that there's more than one place. So I better have the same thing on this side. We're gonna have a lot of problems that are COH. They can join together all different kinds of ways. Okay, so how, now trick question. How many carbons do I have on this side? Six. Yay, six. Cause there's a one here really, right? So it's six times one. How many oxygens do I have? I have 12 there. How many hydrogens do I have? Six. Nope. No, 12. Six, it's six, six times two, so it's 12. And how many oxygens do I have there? Six. So I just do this so I can see that it's going into two different places. You're gonna to need to know that that equals 18, but um, I like to see when I'm going back to balance later, it's, I need to remember that it goes to two different places. Okay, how many carbons do I have here? Hydrogens? How many oxygens? Six, but I'm gonna have more. Um, oh no. And then how many oxygens do I have here? 12. All right, so the math isn't super hard. All right, so 
Is it a balanced equation? Mm -hmm. I have six carbons, 18 oxygens, 12 hydrogens, unbalanced. Yay! Okay, so the trick is remembering that you have to multiply this stoichiometric coefficient by your um, subscript. Okay, so this multiplies by that one, this multiplies by that one, which is one. Okay, and then just remember that if you have your oxygen or something that's in two different places, just make sure you write it both down. Okay, so atoms don't disappear. They're not created or destroyed, so we have to be able to track them. Okay, um, let me flip my thing so I don't go. There are some different kinds of equations that you are going to need to know. Um, we kind of, um, decomposition, what does decomposition sound like? Decompose. decompose. So when something dies, it breaks down into the parts, right? Don't want to see it, but that's what it is, right? So a decomposition reaction means you start out with something, um, some products are that break into its constituent components. Oh wait, is this the next chapter? No, oh, it is. All right, so that's going to be the next chapter. We'll talk about decomposition in the next chapter. All right, so let's just practice uh, balancing some equations. One, I'm so excited, I want to jump ahead. Um, let's do example four, two. Balance the following equations. N2, and, it's, and it, this G means it's a gas, plus H2, which this G means it's a gas, turns into... NH3 gas. Okay, so this one doesn't just say is a balance, this one says balance it. So I'm lazy and they get in my way. So I don't care right now what's gases and solids and liquids. We'll worry about those later. I'm not going to worry about it now. So um, balance it. So now I know that this side has uh, nitrogen and hydrogen. This side has nitrogen and hydrogen. I don't know if it's balanced, so let's balance it. So how many nitrogens are on this side? Two. How many hydrogens are on this side? Mm -hmm. How many nitrogens are on this side? Mm -hmm. How many hydrogens are on this side? Okay, is it balanced? No, it implies that it's not balanced because they're telling me to balance it. So, um, so when I'm making more than one chocolate chip cookie, more than one batch of chocolate chip cookies, I have to, I can make partial batches, but I can't do that here. So I have to multiply up, but I can't change the recipe, right? If I'm making chocolate chip cookies and I just decide to put two bags of chocolate chips in there, it'll be cookies. It won't necessarily be chocolate chip cookies. It'll be like a chocolate chunk with some other stuff, right? It's not the same thing. So I can't change the recipe for these but I can change how much I put in. So I can't change this recipe, which means I can't change the subscripts at all. But I can change how many pieces of nitrogen I add. So I can change the, I'll scooch this over. I can change the stoichiometric coefficient. I can put big numbers in, which means I add more nitrogen, but I can't change the recipe of nitrogen. Okay, I can add more of this, but I can't change the recipe of NH3 is a certain element and I can't change that, okay? So you can change how much of something you put in, but you can't change the recipe. So you can't change the subscripts, subscripts, you can only change the big numbers, okay? So if I look at this and I say, hmm, where should I start? There's no right or wrong answer. Maybe one of you is gonna start with nitrogen, one of you is gonna start with hydrogen, it doesn't matter. So I need this side to have two nitrogens. So the only way that I can have this side have two nitrogens is if I change, if I add, get two, um, two of the compounds of NH3. Okay, I can't just put a two here because that changes the recipe. So I can add a two here, but when I put a two here, that changes how many nitrogens I have. Now I have two. It also changes how many hydrogens I have. I don't have three anymore. Now I have how many? Now I have six. So now my nitrogen's check, check, yay, it's happy. But my hydrogen over here is not. So if I change this to add a two here to make that happy, I have to go backwards now and change this to 
to make this happy. So how would I change this H2 so that it matches this six? <laughs> so if I put a three here, now I have three hydrogens, three of these hydrogen um, H2, remember H is a homonuclear diatomic. So it's tricky because you don't see it there. That's why I did a little circle there. The hydrogen in this case is over in this row. So your nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine on this whole row, and the hydrogen is, is one of those things that you need to remember is a homonuclear diatomic, there's always two. So um, I can change this number, but I can't change this number. So now I have six of these, check, check, balanced. So this, I don't have to have anything there. That means there's one of those, mixes with three of those, and I get two of those, okay? And all I'm doing, my math again is not super hard, but once you change one thing, if you add a big number here, remember that it multiplies out to everything in there. Okay? Let's do propane. Um, this is on 124. Propane, which is C3H8 reacts with oxygen to make carbon dioxide, which now they've told you we learned how to name things, so they're not gonna tell you the formula, so you need to know carbon dioxide is one carbon and dioxide means there's two oxygens, okay? Carbon dioxide, okay? Um, there's certain ones they're gonna expect you to know, and water. They expect you to know water. I hope you know that water is H2O. Okay? Do I have this written correctly? Hmm. Remember, in my periodic table, my homonuclear diatomics are nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and everything in this row. Is oxygen one of them? Yep. So they said oxygen, but I have to remember that oxygen is O2. They're gonna do that with hydrogen, they expect you to just know it. Nitrogen, they're gonna expect you to know it. Oxygen, they're gonna expect you to know it, okay? Most of the time they give you, like they said propane and they told you a C3H8. Yes, I don't have to remember anything, I just copy it down, okay? So, it says, um, write a balanced equation. So now I have all the, the um, recipes, now I have to make sure that I have the right amounts. So, oh look, it's a CHO problem again. So how many carbons are on this side? Three. Three. How many hydrogens? Two. Eight. How many oxygens? Two. Two. Let's see if I'm balanced. C-H-O. How many carbons are on this side? Nothing. Not balanced. How many hydrogens? Two. Two. How many oxygens? Remember, it's going to go into two different places now. So I have two, two. here plus two. one here. It would have to have a two here to make that a two. Okay, so this doesn't have a number, so there's just one. Okay, so I think the easiest way to do these, save your oxygen for last. Because everything else I change in here, if I put a number outside of any of these, it changes two things. So get that done first. This one, if I put a number outside here, it only changes oxygen. I always save that one for last. So where's the best place to start? I don't know. Um, you can start with carbon, you can start with hydrogen, whatever. There's no right or wrong answer. So I'll just start with carbon because I have that one first. So I have a three here and I have a one here. Which one do I have to change? The smaller one. So I have to make this into a two. I have to make it into three. a three to be matched. Two. So and there's no adding here. We're all okay. There's only adding when I have them down here. There's no adding up here that's all um, multiplying. So I have to have a three here which changes that, but as soon as I put that, it changes something else, right? Mm -hmm. What did it change? The oxygen. So now it's not a two there anymore, what is it? Three. All right, so yay, not quite yay. <coughs> so let's change the, this one because that's gonna change two different things too. So what? this one's an eight, this one's a two. Which one do I have to change? Three. So I have to change that, how do I change that? What do I put there? Four. four. So I make that a four, that changes that to an 
Eight, yay, but it also changes my oxygen. So now I have how many oxygens over here? Two. So now I have six plus four on this side. Here's six, here's four. So I have 10 oxygens. So now I have to go back over here and make this so that this number is a 10. What do I add here to make that a 10? Five. Three, eight, 10, done. Balance. So I have the same amount of atoms on that side as on this side. I haven't changed any of the recipes. I just added more oxygen, okay? I didn't change any of the recipes. This is the recipe. I just added more of them, okay? And the reason I did that is because I have to have my atoms balanced. Do you want me to close that? Is that too hot on you? It's fine. All right. So, let's see. Okay, so balancing equations is kind of fun. Um, the math is not super hard. The trick that you're going to get into is, again, they're going to have, make sure whatever you have on this side, you have to have on this side. There are, a lot of these problems are going to be carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. They mix all different kinds of ways. Always remember that you're, if you have hydrogen by itself, it's H2. If you have oxygen by itself, it's O2. And they're not going to tell you when, necessarily when they give you the words. Um, and I usually leave the one that this number multiplies out when it just does one thing, I leave that for the last thing to balance. Okay? Um, all right, does anybody have a question? any notes as to things that you need to remember. Um, okay, so just remember the reason you're balancing these is because of the law of mass conservation. That means nothing's created or destroyed. Whatever's on one side of the, pro of the reactants is going to be on the other side in your reactants. Um, some number of atoms are on both sides. So like oxygen went into two different places. Um, no, remember from our labs today that your solid is going to take up less space and be more condensed. Your molecules are going to be closer together. Your molecules are going to move slower, the less heat that you have in it. So cold is going to be smaller and move less, move sl more slowly than something that's hot. The only thing that changes in that is water when it freezes is lighter and takes up less space. It's the only thing in nature that does that. And the fishies are so happy, otherwise we'd have fish sickles. Um, they're going to ask you about what homonuclear diatomics they are. So just remember that makes, I said carbon the first time, it's not. It's nitrogen, oxygen, fr uh, fluorine, and then this whole line, and the H comes over here. Okay? Um, all right, let's do... Mm -hmm. Let's do one of the practice problems. This is number five in the practice problems. So we'll have C, A, um, F2. Again, it says aqueous. That means it's a liquid. Well, it's not a pure liquid. It's in solution. Um, and 2, N, H, 4, C, L turns into C, A, C, L, 2. And... N, H, 4, F. That doesn't look like an H. Okay, that doesn't look like a 4. Okay, so they're not going to ask you to balance this one because it's too hard. Um, but they're just asking, is it balanced? So what um, elements do I have on this side? If you don't know the name of it, you can just tell me the letters. So I have C, A, it's calcium. This one, does anybody know what F is? Fluorine. Fluorine, very good. What's this? Nitrogen. N is nitrogen. What's this? Nitrogen. H is hydrogen. Mm. Cl is chlorine, very good. So I have to have the same, uh, they're not going to have you balance these because this one is a little tricky. So they're just checking. Do I have the same atoms on this side and this side? So let's just practice counting the atoms. How many calciums do I have? One. How many fluorines do I have? Two. How many nitrogens do I have? Seven. Aha, uh -huh, very good. How many hydrogens do I have? Eight. Aha. Uh -huh. And how many chlorines do I have? One. Two. Two. OK. 
Okay. How many calciums do I have? Just one. How many chlorines do I have? Oops. How many nitrogens do I have? What? One. How many hydrogens do I have? And how many chlorines do I have? One. Right? So it's balanced. As soon as you have one thing that doesn't match, you don't even have to continue, really. If you can look on this side and say, uh, oh, I got two chlorines here and one chlorine there that's not balanced. Okay? Now, it asks you to balance it, then keep going. Okay? But again, this one's a little trickier. Okay, so let's balance this one. Wah! My very highly technical board here. Winter today. All right, let's do balance following equation HCl plus zinc turns into zinc chloride and hydrogen. Oh, hydrogen gas. Okay, so what do I have on this side? Hydrogen, chlorine, zinc. I better have hydrogen chlorine and zinc. These are, they, they wrote them down so that these are the formulas. I can't change the formulas. I can only add and multiply up with my stoichiometric coefficients. So how many hydrogens are on this side? One. Chlorines? One. Zincs? One. Ooh, that was hard. Hydrogen? Two. Chlorine? Two. Zinc? One. So I'm obviously not balanced. Where should I start? Hmm. Again, there's really no wrong answer, but because this is all by itself, I'm probably going to save that for last. Oh, look at this. So, um, so, I don't know, pick one. Let's what do we have to change? What? Hydrogen by two. All right, so let's, uh, hydrogen by itself again, too. So, I don't know. So, uh, fine, let's do that. Hydrogen, there's two here, so what I got to do over here? Put two. So now I added a two here, so how does that affect chlorine? So that gives me two hydrogens, but it also gives me two chlorines. So my matched, matched, matched. So then I'm done. Done. Okay. All right. Let's try to do one. Let's do number eight because that one has it in words. Heptene, which is C, 7, H, 10, if you wanted to be, if you wanted to be um, perfect, you would have a L for liquid. Um, AQ, AQ means it's in a solution form, L means it's a pure liquid. There's a little bit difference between them. Anyways, it can react with gaseous hydrogen to make liquid heptene. C7H16. Write a balanced chemical equation for this reaction. Hmm, do I have the recipes right? What's wrong? Formations have two. It's a homonuclear diatomic. You have to have a two there. They didn't tell you that. Don't forget that. Okay? So, am I balanced? I need carbon, hydrogen. Oh, that's it. I need carbon and hydrogen. So, hmm, how many carbons do I have on this side? Seven. How many hydrogens do I have? I have 10 here and I have 2 here. How many carbons do I have? Seven. How many hydrogens do I have? So how do I... My carbon is fine, so I don't really want to mess with this, right? So how do I change this into I only have 12 here and I have 16 here? Hmm. Put a 3 by the hydrogen. So if I do that, that would give me how many? Six, two. six, and oh. now I have 16. Okay, again, the numbers aren't, the math isn't hard. Where you're going to get tripped up is you're going to be thinking you're going to have an H there and then it's not going to be balanced, right? So don't forget your homonuclear diatomics. Okay, let's maybe do one more. Um, 
let's do number nine. Again, there's lots of examples of carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. The chill problems, C, H, and O. Lots of them. All right, C, seven. I like when they write it down for me so that I can, I don't have to worry about getting the formula correct. They give me the formula. When they give me the formula, I don't, I don't have to worry about that. I just have to change my stoichiometric coefficients. Okay. All right, so let's balance it. Oh, look, it's C, H, and O. Oh, look, C, H, and O. How many carbons? Seven. How many hydrogens? Sixteen. How many oxygens? Two. How many carbons? How many hydrogens? How many oxygens? Trick question. Three. Yep, it goes two here two plus and one. plus one here. Okay, so again, no right or wrong place to start, but I would save that one for last. Okay, so I, I usually just start with carbon because it's top. So I gotta get this one up to a seven. So how do I change this? So if I change that, it changes this. What does that change? 14. 14. So now I want to change my hydrogen. How do I change that? What do I put here? Eight. That changes that to be happy. And then that's what? How does that change my oxygen? Six and eight. So, ooh, 14 and 8. Can I add that? 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, right? 8, 8, 22, right? Yikes. So what number do I have to put here? Eleven. Yay! And your math teachers are happy that you know how to divide and add. Okay. So check, check, check. Okay. Feel comfortable? Mm -hmm. Okay. So again, um, next time we'll talk about. Um, different common equations, um, which I alluded to, decomposition is one of them. Okay, um, so write me up a lab and do your practice problems and your review questions. Check them with your uh, answer key, put your answer key away, take your test. Next week you owe me a lab and a test. Okay?